Hi guys, welcome back to Movement Monday. We're really excited you're joining in with us again to learn some really great information that's gonna be helpful to all of you. In the clinic a lot, we see patients that have low back pain, and I know many of you suffer from either chronic low back pain or periodic low back pain. So today we're gonna actually talk about the core. And many times people have misconceptions about the core. People think, well, I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna do some exercises, I'm gonna do some sit-ups, because sit-ups work my core. And actually, if you were ever to come in, and those of you that know us, that have been through our core program before, know that I don't consider sit-ups a primary core exercise when we start from the beginning. Essentially, your core consists of a couple really important muscle groups that people typically don't think about. We all like to think about having nice six-pack abs that are nice and defined, having the nice cut through our abdomen. And those are beautiful muscles to have when they're developed but those really aren't your core muscles. The muscles that give you your six pack, your rectus abdominis, which is a muscle that lines up and down your abdomen, and your obliques, which come in laterally, those muscles are actually trunk movers. They flex your spine, they side bend your spine, they help us get up and out of bed in the morning, they help us move. The muscles that actually are your core are muscles that actually shunt spinal movement. So when you actually move, the spine should remain stable. And in many times when you have back pain, the core muscles say, the heck with this, we're just gonna shut off. And when your muscles shut off, it leaves you very vulnerable to excessive motion through your spine that then leads to wear and tear, early arthritis, uh, disc herniations, disc irritation, all kinds of things that occur because the spine is not stable. So your core muscles actually consist of your pelvic floor, your transverse abdominis, which is a lower abdominal muscle that works like a corset around your spine. Your deep spinal stabilizer called the multifidus. Multifidus is a muscle that sits right along the spine. So those three main muscle groups together are what essentially comprise your core. And most people have never heard about these muscles. If you've heard about them, if you have any urinary incontinence or you have any leakage issues and people typically tell you to start working your pelvic floor, but most of the time when we think about back pain, most patients don't think about these muscles. And this is where all of our low back pain uh, patients start is by activating these muscles. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna teach you how to do a proper uh, isometric contraction of your pelvic floor as well as your transverse abdominis. So the first thing that's really important is that you learn to find a pelvic neutral position. Pelvic neutral is a position that's somewhere in between your spine being flexed and your spine being extended. So the easiest way, honestly, to find pelvic neutral is to actually lie down. And if you lie down on a bed, I want you to think about, you've got bugs sitting up under your back. And if you arch away to get away from the bugs, this is called an anterior pelvic tilt. You're actually extending your spine. And then if you flatten like you're gonna squish the bugs, that's what's called a posterior pelvic tilt. And somewhere in between those two motions is pelvic neutral. And this is the position that our spine should stay in throughout most of the day. It's the position that I want you to learn to recruit your core. So once you learn pelvic neutral lying down, which is kind of helpful because you can feel your back leaving the mat, coming back to the mat, you should be able to find pelvic neutral in standing as well. If you tuck your bottom versus arching your back, it's somewhere in between that your back feels comfortable and that's typically your pelvic neutral position. So I want you to always think about anytime you're gonna engage your core is I want you to start in the pelvic neutral position. So if I'm sitting down on a stool even, I can, I can slump, I can arch away and somewhere in between is pelvic neutral. Now, let's talk about pelvic floor. Both women and men have pelvic floors. And the way that you contract your pelvic floor for women is I want you to think about being midstream urination and you're gonna stop the flow. It's that squeeze of your pelvic floor that contracts the pelvic floor. And the way I want you to think about this is your pelvic floor is like the foundation to your house. If you think about what happens if you build your house with no foundation, the structure eventually is going to collapse and that's what happens in our spine we end up with lots of wear and tear and remember if you have any back pain these muscles are shutting down they're no longer working for you even though you'd like to think they are they've like gone to sleep they've said nope we've had enough and we're going to shut off 
So we need to get these muscles reactivated. Pelvic floor, think about restricting the flow of urine. The other way to contract in women pelvic floor is to think about if we were to tie a string between your pubic bone and your tailbone, and that string created almost like a little hammock. I want you to think about lifting the hammock, like you're gonna straighten it out. So it's literally a lift. Now, when you do this, your buttocks should remain calm and quiet. They shouldn't be clenching tight. You shouldn't be holding your breath. Your breath should remain normal. The minute you start holding your breath with these exercises, you're not doing them correctly. For men, pelvic floor is slightly different. Guys, I know this is gonna sound really bizarre, but I want you to think about lifting your testicles up into your abdomen. It's a pelvic floor lift. Just like in women, you're basically lifting the boys up, drawing them up. Uh, my cue for that is let's do wheels up on the airplane. So guys, when I tell you wheels up on the airplane, you're drawing up, that's your pelvic floor. I can guarantee you, you go to a gym, most people don't ever hear this. They don't ever learn how to contract their pelvic floor. Ideally, I'd like you doing that 10 times every hour, no matter what position you're in. I want you to learn how to do it walking, standing, sitting, driving, cooking, doesn't matter. I want you to learn how to engage these muscles in all positions because we need them working in all positions. Now, second exercise, lower abdominals, okay? I said lower abdominals, the main muscle is called your transverse abdominus. It's a muscle that comes around the lower part of your abdomen it inserts into some very thick connective tissue around your back. It's the corset that helps hold everything together. Transverse abdominus, the way you think about contracting this, is I want you to put your hands on your pelvis and essentially you have two bones right here. You should be able to feel those bones pretty well. It's almost like, almost at your belt line. And I want you to, I want you to think about putting a belt on and you know what happens when you tighten a belt is you gotta draw your belly button in just a little bit to cinch the belt just two notches. I don't want you cinching the belt all the way. I want you just cinching the belt two notches. So essentially, you're gonna put your hands right there, and I want you to think about cinching the belt, drawing your belly button just very gently in. The minute you try to overdo this, you're gonna feel all those big muscles that wanna kick in. And many times, these big muscles are gonna overpower the small muscles. And guess what, the small muscles then say, I don't have to work anymore. Thank you guys for kicking in. Well, it's counterintuitive to the health of our spine. So it's really important. This isn't more the better. It's really the less is better. I want you to engage these muscles without all of the big trunk flexors and side benders kicking in. Same thing, top of every hour, no matter what position you're in, do 10 lower abdominal contractions, holding 10 seconds each very easy thing to do throughout the day. After you've done them for two days separately, then I want you to start thinking about bringing them together. They automatically want to occur together anyway, but for purposes of training and getting people reconnected with pelvic floor and lower abs, I typically have patients start two days separately, 10 contractions, top of every hour, no matter what position you're in, holding 10 seconds each, and then eventually you're gonna bring them together. All of our Movement Monday series that are based on core are going to rely on the fact that you're engaging these muscles before we do any other core exercises. I know many of you are out there doing bridging and sideline leg raises and those sorts of things. And when you do those things, your core should be engaged. You should be contracting those muscles to help stabilize your spine. If you're not, you're putting your spine at risk for shearing and then more deterioration, more back pain. The more pain you have, the more the muscle shuts down, the more the muscle shuts down, the more deterioration you get. And it works in that constant feedback loop. So two main muscle groups. The other thing that I think is really important is that you remember to breathe. Sometimes with the lower abdominal exercise, we wanna draw in and suck in and hold our breath. I do not want you holding your breath with these exercises. It's really important, and sometimes to even get the lower abs to contract properly, that you exhale first and then cinch the belt. That way you're not having the tendency to draw in a big breath of air and fill your lungs and draw that belly button in. The other thing that's really important that I want you to watch out for is when you begin to kick in the bigger muscle groups, the rectus, the obliques, and you place your hand over your lower abdomen 
and you go to engage your pelvic floor and abs, if your hand domes away from your abdomen, so instead of it drawing in, you feel this what's called a doming effect. And that effect is where your hand kind of bellows out from your abdomen. It means that you've kicked in the big muscles. So anytime you're doing this, I always tell people, use your hands as, as guides, as cues. Draw pelvic floor in, draw lower abdominals in, and make sure that your abdomen isn't doming. Because when you're doming, you've then kicked in the rectus muscle that actually lies under the muscle you're trying to contract. So it pops it up and creates that dome effect. So another thing to watch out for when you're doing these exercises, again, I can't emphasize enough that every core program, everything you're doing in the gym, you should be engaging these muscles. Ladies, those of you that are having some pelvic floor issues and some leakage and incontinence, this is something that people notice when they start doing these exercises, they actually notice that that starts getting better. Um, I will say that if you need to come into the clinic, we're happy to take you through these exercises. If you want us to manually take you through them, we're happy to do that. And, I, and if you have any issues with your low back, we'd love to see you in the clinic. Um, we're happy to treat you and begin some great core exercises. So hopefully that, got, that gets you going with core. You're gonna see Paris and myself come on uh, later and we're gonna progress these core exercises along. But this is where it all starts. So you guys get out there, start doing your pelvic floor and your ab work, do it throughout the day. Nobody has to know you're doing it unless you start making funny faces. And then I always tell people, they're gonna to begin to wonder about you. So try to keep it facial expressions to a minimum, but get going with it. I think you'll start noticing some big differences. So. Happy Movement Monday, and we'll see you again in two weeks. Thanks so much.